Good evening everyone, this is Kiwi Whispers. Tonight I will show you how I go about making my own whisper videos. I have had uh, several people ask me the process that I use when I make a video. So I thought I'll demonstrate exactly what I do. Now it's not the most straightforward process. Uh, there is a bit of technical expertise involved, uh, but we'll go through it and we'll just see exactly what I am doing. So I am on a Mac and I use GarageBand when I record my whispers. If you're on a Windows computer, um, I haven't used any of the voice recording programs, but as far as I'm aware, uh, something like Audacity does a good job. So I, I begin with a new project and I select the voice. And then I go and hit, go ahead and give it a number, whichever one it is uh, that I'm up to. So this will be my 114th video. You don't have to worry about any of these parameters here. It doesn't apply to a, a simple whisper video. <coughs> Alright, so it comes up uh, with some options as to how you want to record your video. Obviously, for me, I'm a male, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete this track, the female track, as I'll be using the male basic track. Now, when you are recording, uh, you do have the option to listen to yourself um, as you speak. So that's what this monitor is, if you turn it on, you you'll be able to hear yourself when you record. And you can change the input recording level uh, to suit. And because I, I want to keep a uh, track of how long I'm speaking for, I change the, the LCD to the, the time. So it will, as I'm recording, it will tell me how long I'm going for. Uh, generally, I just stick with a basic vocal track and just keep it basic. Uh, if I'm doing effects, I will add to that later on and I'll show you that. And then we can edit exactly how you want it to sound. So, the basic functions that I use just for a simple whisper would be to turn the bass reduction off or if I were to have it on, I would just turn it up slightly. Um, just because bass can sometimes be a bit annoying for some people listening. But I actually quite like bass, so I would, I would keep it down a bit just to keep it in there. Um, now, I'm not super familiar with all the settings in GarageBand. Or Garage, GarageBand, however. Americans say it, garage band, garage band. Anyway, I would normally turn the compressor off. Don't ask me why, but um, it just seems to help. Uh, also, uh, I apologize for all the background sound that you're probably hearing. Um, so, you've got other settings such as an equalizer, which you can change to suit. Uh, so you've got all sorts of settings, presets here. I would normally come down to the, the vocal section. And one, one of the ones that I think sounds quite nice is vocal presence. And as you can see, it just changes it slightly and you can analyse how the sound is being affected uh, when you speak into the microphone. So if I come up close and whisper, it just adds a bit more presence. So if I were to change it to reduce the S, now if I'm saying my S's, it slightly dulls them. S snake Samuel. Uh, so you can you can play around with anything that you like. Uh, Hi-fi, that might improve it a bit. It sounds a bit a bit more 
Other, the two other basic uh, settings that are, should be available on any recording, uh, sound recording software is your echo and your reverb. If I'm just doing a rambling video, I would usually t turn them both off uh, just because it can be a bit distracting. I know in my early videos, I always tended to have a bit of reverb, reverb on. And that just, if you can hear that, it just sounds like you're in a, an echoey sort of uh, starry <laughs> space. And if you go to, too high, it can be really terrible. And it just sounds awful. If I were to have reverb, reverb on, I would keep it at about 20%. And echo, I normally keep down really low, just if I am doing an effect. You can just hear a slight effect if I were whispering. So, um, yeah, those are the basic functions anyway, just for a, a really simple whisper. Now, if I were to do a full-on effect video like I do sometimes, which some people loathe, but some people love, um, there are several different things that you can choose from. Um, some really nice, easy ones to work. Uh, one thing that I do use most of the time is the speech enhancer. What this does is cuts down the amount of background noise that you hear, so such as uh, my computer hum, um, and it even cuts down traffic noise on the road. Uh, which you can you can change the amount. See, there's a truck coming past now, so I'll just So I don't know if you could hear that or not, but um, that should have cut down the amount of noise that comes through the microphone You can change the sensitivity um, to different levels uh, One other thing that I do like to have on same time is this um, information bar. So if I were to start recording this, hello testing, this is a test recording. And um, so if we let that record, I think we can alter it while we're recording. Yes, we can. That's good. So once you've finished recording, you um, you can go back over your work. I'm going to turn this off. And uh, editing for me is quite a big part because I do like to edit out any irregular sounds and things. Um, so if there was a loud truck going past, I would stop and then edit it out. And editing is... Well, for me, it's really simple anyway. Uh, if you've never tried it, it's um, it's worth a go. So, for example, if I want to take this last bit out, when you come to edit it later on. So say I didn't want that part, you just go back to where you want to finish, and you just sim simply drag it back to that end point, and now it's gone. And then you can start recording again, and and all that sort of stuff. 
Now going back to effects, when I do my effects videos, uh, so I'd have the speech enhancer on, I'd normally set it about there, and then if I were to do a panning video, I would use a tremolo, but if we record this you'll see how terrible it sounds at first. It's just constantly going between left and right, and I'm sorry if that's disconcerting. So what you want to change it to, you want to turn the intensity right down. I'd go fairly low, or right to the end, and the speed in which it tra changes from left to right. Uh, so I normally do that to the second to last one. And if we go ahead and turn that back on. Sorry, I want to turn the intensity up. So now if you're listening with headphones on, it should be traveling between the left and the right. It is going quite slowly at the moment. So if I speed this up slightly, you should notice the difference between the left and the right side of your headphones. I should probably keep talking so you can actually hear it. So right now it's going over to the right side. And if I speed that up again, it should be, yeah, so now it's gone quite Other effects that I do sometimes is if I want to try and recreate the binaural or 3D sound without the use of two microphones like I didn't used to have, I would add a phaser. And what a phaser does is it makes it sound crazy. So I go ahead and record this. So this is the sound of a phaser, and again, this is probably quite disconcerting. But again, you go, go through and change the parameters. So the intensity, you probably want this high again, and the speed low, so it doesn't travel too quickly, just the one before the end. And the feedback, you want to turn that right down, because it actually sounds terrible when the feedback's up. I'm not sure if you... yeah, anyway. And then, because it doesn't sound terribly natural, I would turn the tremolo back on as well. And it just adds a bit of a... a um, just a, an unnatural rhythm, as though you were walking around the person. And with headphones on, hopefully you, you can hear the the sound that it's it's making and it sort of it's not great but it does recreate the sound of of uh, an actual binaural uh, 3d microphone setup if you were using two microphones as i said it's not perfect so i don't use it too often So, after I would finish my recording, I want to go ahead and save it. So, once I'm, I've gone through it, checked it, to see that it sounds alright, and I'm happy with it, I will save it by exporting. And this is the part uh, which actually it's kind of the most important part if you want good sound quality sort of overall um, because I do a two-part process of making video like this is the first part the second part is putting it into video form so you want to make sure you output a high quality sound file 
Now I've got two choices, AAC encoder or MP3. Um, for this purpose I'll just use MP3 encoder. And then you've got different quality options, your good, high or higher quality. Um, when I first started making videos, I always just used to leave it on the default, whatever it was, probably just high quality. But what I've been doing lately is going to custom and putting the settings right up as high as they can go, 320 kilobytes, uh, kilobits per second, which in audio terms is should be really good quality sound. Uh, so I just turn highest up, make sure it's stereo. Um, to be honest, I don't know what some of these ones are, so I just leave them and hit OK, and then I export. So I'll just save that to the desktop, and that will render out. Okay, so once that has finished exporting, you can see it there on my desktop. Um, there's actually another step. I'm being really fussy, I know. But to get even better sound quality, I have to convert this MP3 file. Uh, so what I will do is I need to put it into iTunes. And I'll just find that. And I want to uh, convert this mp3 file into an AIFF version. What this is actually doing is it's just making it compatible with my video editing software. And um, it just makes it easier to work with and it's it's a, a better file type. So I just need to find that where it is. So if I copy this and then open up my video editing software. So there it is, it's the Whisper 114 AIF file. So uh, this this makes it more compatible, as I said, and it, uh, it's a better sound file to use. Normally if I just imported an mp3 file, it would have to render, and by doing this conversion, it doesn't have to render, and it's just, it makes it so much easier to work with. But uh, normally you won't have to worry about this, so I'm just doing it for for my sake. Alright, so the video starts, and as soon as my beautiful opening screen fades out, the audio starts. So, because I edited it, edited it in GarageBand previously, it should be all good to go and I don't have to do anything to it. All I do normally is just put in an audio, audio transition just to fade in the start and then one at the end to fade out. And that's basically it. If I were doing a video where there was actual video footage to see in this bar along here would be the video file that I use which I could demonstrate in, in another video sometime but as it is as just a whisper video without anything to see I go ahead and output this uh, again, I'm being really fussy with how I output it because I do want to try and keep the best sound quality I can. Uh, you could just go ahead and let it pick its own settings and it will do it itself. But uh, I want to convert it using my own custom settings. Alright, so I'll name that. And then I'll just keep the format as a QuickTime 
movie and then I go to the options now just because it's a whisper video without any video footage the actual video settings don't need to be high because there's nothing to see uh, so what I normally do is I just change these settings filter uh, depending on if I was doing an H no sorry not that one that size if I were doing in a high definition video I would choose the high definition setting uh, but hopefully it shouldn't matter for this and I just do a standard size now sound settings this is the most important part uh, again I don't know the difference between all of these um, I was recommended to use AAC keep it stereo of course uh, the rate 48 and then uh, the render settings this is the biggest part I would go the best setting and target bit rate I'll pump that all the way up to 320 and that should be it and then I keep on internet streaming okay and save and this normally takes about five or ten minutes to export and then I'm good for uploading and that's basically it um, please feel free to ask me any other questions that I might not have gone over and if you did see something that I could have done better then please let me know because I'm always looking to improve my videos and sound quality but as it is, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was um, helpful or just uh, useful for putting you to sleep. And um, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.